Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have a a guest today, Dr. John Ertley. We're going to talk about what it takes to fulfill your mission in life by being good stewards of our body and living a healthy, a healthy lifestyle. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. We're stoked to have our guest today, our co-adventure guide. We're going to talk about uh, how to maintain a healthy lifestyle with Dr. John Ertley from one of the co-founders of Solidarity, Solidarity Health Share. You know, um, as, a, as an athlete, I'm 66 years old. I made it to the podium in the open division in the stand-up paddle surfing two weeks ago. And I know I can do that because I'm not saying I'm in the greatest shape. I could be in a lot better shape. But through my life, I remember when I was in high school and I was, I was playing high school football not too well. Uh, and I, then I graduated from high school. I was going to college. And I saw an old friend of mine on the football team a year or two later. He was so out of shape. And then I looked at the people around me that were 10 years older. And I go, I never want to be that guy. I want to stay in athletic shape for my whole life as long as as long as I can, because I know I need to be in good physical condition in order to fulfill the goals and the dreams that I have in life. Uh, you know, in, in the back in the day, we the, the monks of the desert, they used to fast themselves almost to death. But one thing for sure that they had was they had uh, they, their bodies. Li- their bodies were under the dominion of their will, and their will was under the dominion of God. We, uh, you know, Saint Francis called his 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 uh, body brother ass. Uh, we need to know that we are supposed to steer the reins of our body's appetites and how we steward it. In in Hawaii, we call it kuleana. It's a it's a stewardship. It's a responsibility. But it's more than that. It's kind of an ownership. And so I see so many men that join my bear's man cave that they, I mean, I tell you, their their arms fall off their shoulders like. There's nothing holding on to them there but a couple of ligaments. When I come home from Hawaii to the mainland, or when I come back to the mainland, I just like, what happened? My, my kids go like, what happened to the mainland? You know, it's everybody's fat and out of shape. And I'm telling you, uh, gluttony is actually a sin. Uh, and, and not being a good steward of the temple of the Holy Spirit is not good. Um, and God wants, you know, my, I told my wife, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay so healthy that I'm with you all the way, all the way till she leaves the earth and goes to heaven. I want to be that. I don't want to be the guy that dies young. I want to be with her all the way. And I want to be with my children. And I want to be able to fulfill my mission by being uh, healthy. So we have with us today, finally, they always told me this was going to happen. The man in the white suits were going to come for me. We have Dr. John Early wearing his, uh, uh, he's, he's a medical physician. He's one of the co-founders of Solidarity Health Share. Welcome to the show, Doc. Hey, thanks, Bear. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, we're, we're just so stoked to have you on. You know, the... Uh, the solidarity, first of all, has been a great help to our ministry. But a couple of my family members are actually uh, covered by this unique concept of solidarity health share. Before we go dig a little bit a little bit more into your, um, what would we call it, your daredevil type life, can you, uh, can you just tell me what your vision was for solidarity? It's, it's, it's so vital and it's so important, your commitment to the moral teaching of the church and through that ministry. Yeah, so... Yeah, so it was actually in 2012 when I say it's not my vision or any of our founders' vision, but it's the vision of the Holy Spirit that really led and pushed us to be able to actually create Solidarity Health Share, which was really in a response to the, what was going on with the Affordable Care Act and seeing prices continually increasing, premiums increasing, deductibles increasing. We're paying for things that are unethical and inconscionable as as Catholics if we are really informed and having a good moral conscience. And so it was really this ability to be able to move forward, to be able to say, we had all known about Catholic healthcare or about healthcare sharing before, but not there was no Catholic option. And so it's a group of members that come together to be able to share one another's medical needs, just like they did in the Old Testament, or just like they did in the New Testament in the early church, and what mm-hmm. the Amish communities have done for you know the years, and basically banding together and giving to one another in times of when they actually really need it. And so this is where it was really neat. In 2012 is when the company had started, but we started actually sharing in medical needs. We started with six families in 
2016. And so we've continued to be able to grow since that 2016 mark, where we now serve over 8,800 families and its members, memberships. Um, and so this has been really neat for us to be able to just see the growth and the ability of these families band, bonding together to be able to actually share in times of when other members in the community are actually suffering with diseases and medical illnesses. And so it's beautiful to just, you know, the people that say, yeah, I belong to solidarity. I sit in the pew at mass, you know, and I see people that are in solidarity and say, you know, if they're going through a medical condition, I can be very confident that, yep, we're actually the brothers and sisters in this ministry are here to serve you and actually paying for those medical needs. And also, I know there's a prayer. There's a prayer element to it too, where people are praying for each other, uh, you know, for their for their physical needs too. Yeah. So we pray every day in the solidarity office. So prayer is a very critical thing for us. We know that prayer doesn't. It's not just words. It actually does something. <laughs> that those are yeah. actual graces that are being yeah. received. Yeah. And so it's this this beauty, and I, you know, we'll talk a little more. I, I hope to as well. And just talking about health and wellness and how important it is to be connected, to be mm. in relationship, having mm -hmm. community, what that does for our health and well-being ongoing. But it's this ability to really, again, the prayer unites us as brothers and sisters. We are the body of Christ. And so, and, and again, to be able to actually pray every single day for our members, to be able to lift them up and continue to be able to pray for them over the phone when they call in is just a real gift of the ministry. And where are you located right now? I see a beautiful backdrop. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see how handsome I am. I mean, how handsome Dr. John is. But where are you? It looks like there's still greenery behind you. Are you in Colorado oh, yeah. or where Scottsdale. are you? I'm in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona right now. Oh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay. Scottsdale, you know, there's a lot of... There's a lot of... Yeah, go ahead. I've got a golf course on the back of my uh, screen here. And so right here in my medical office. Yeah, and you can golf there all year round golf here all year round absolutely it's but, just the gorgeous weather this is this is the month that we live in scottsdale though because or this mm. is the month that we want to live in scottsdale because it's not the 115 degree dry heat in july but right. this is the time to be able to actually live it on up so no there's a lot of beach there there's just no ocean there's a lot of sand around that area i think I don't <laughs> you, know. you not exactly it. tropical yeah i had a friend who wanted to be a pearl diver once i was talking to him the other day i suggested he'd have a change of career to become a pearl diver in arizona you know, because he's kind of lazy. But yeah, a lot of beach, no water. But uh, Dr. Dr. John, uh, I want to uh, get a little bit more personal before we talk about uh, yeah. more about the health situation. For someone who, pro who proposes that people look healthy, if you could see him, you guys, they look so, he looks so unhealthy. Now, actually, you look like you're in great shape. But for a man who's a proponent for health, why would you go hang gliding on a homemade hang glider? <laughs> well... This is when I was in college. Um, and so what I didn't know is that my dad had had a homemade hang glider in the garage. And so I was digging through the garage one day and I actually came across this thing and it was this great, incredible discovery that this was this hang glider that was present there. So me and my brothers got together. And yeah, that's we, the key thing. Me and my brothers that, yeah, or my somehow, male friends. Somehow right. whenever the brothers are together, you hold know, my beer and watch this. Each other on. So we ended up taking it out and ended up, it was a, what I didn't realize was how windy of a day it was. Mm. <laughs> and so when they, we thought the wind was a good thing for this hang glider, mm. but it was a little too windy for our liking. And so when we actually took it on out and started to be able to actually bring it up to the hill and try to be able to fly it on down, it was an absolute disaster. So I know that a couple of my brothers who were on the one side literally flipped it over and by the grace of God, they didn't break any bones. But uh, that was, yeah, it's, life is filled with adventures, you know? Well, and what everybody's, just, what everybody's no, wondering though was, was the hang glider okay? <laughs> no, it wasn't. It tore. <laughs> 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 the material, it was, a, and, it, and granted, this was my dad's hang glider, you know, and they, that he built when he was uh, in his 20s. So no, I mean, it was old material. It was just a bad idea all around, but we had a, we lived to tell the tale. I remember I used to live in uh, Southern California in Ventura County, and I'd go down the hill, the back hill from Thousand Oaks to the beach. And on the way, right near an area, by the way, where the Hotel California is, uh, picture was taken. It used to be a mental institution out. It's a college, probably pretty much the same thing. But there's a little hill there filled with all these ca really prickly cactuses. It's just a mountain of cactus. Like there's no, there's, they're just piled on top of each other. 
and prickly pear, I think is it's called. And I saw a hang glider had landed in there. Ooh. Even putting well, your oh, I don't know. If, I don't know how they ever got them out, but I don't think his buddies were going to go in and get them. Well, at least I didn't have any prickly pear at that event. I did do a I did do a parasail for my bachelor party, a, a, between two um, a cliffs that did have uh, some some cacti on it, some big saguaros and uh, now, prickly. Wait. Was this, were you, so has this become something, a, a passion of yours? You begin to do this? No, no, oh, I okay. don't. I'm just telling you that this is, this is, I've never become good at it. <laughs> You're just one of those guys that said, I'm not so sure I really want to get married. Uh, yeah, maybe exactly. I'll go hang gliding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've done, uh, I've done some parasailing and I've, and I've skydived, but I think this whole paras, uh, you know, parasailing off the back of a boat, you know, and then I've, I've done yeah. quite a bit of skydiving, but th this thing uh, in Hawaii, we have these cliffs, the Ko'olau range on the windward side and they're, they're, they're skimming along in these, uh, in their hang gliders. And I'm like, man, I would never do that. That's just a little bit too sketchy. Living on the edge, right? Living on the edge. This We're is talking what, you know, though it's the, the adventure and the excitement is, is living to tell the tale. Yeah. Well, we're talking with doc, Dr. John Ertley. He's one of the co-founders of SolidarityHealthShare.org. Um, you're, uh, you're, can people reach you at that website, find out more about how to, how to uh, um, become a member? Yeah, please. The best way to be able to do it is visit that website, www.SolidarityHealthShare.org. And that's the best place to be able to actually get more information about solidarity, about becoming a member and actually figuring out what this health sharing thing is all about and the way that we actually serve our members. Um, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Two of my two members of my, of my family are members. And one of the first things they got them to do is to get on a health uh, program. So we're going to talk more about that when we get back. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you're notified when any new content comes out. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, this is when we give a little shout out to those people that are supporting our ministry. Uh, we can't really do this without you. We really appreciate our Patreon donors. That's at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. And so I'm going to give a shout out to some of our recent uh, donors. Arturo Aragon. By the way, I think these guys are all Nights on Bikes members. Brian Kubinski. Earl Schaub, Frank Sweeney, who's thank you so much, Frank, for your long-term donations to us. James Landry, uh, Jerry Cohn, Joe Gomes, Mark Clearly, Melissa Mason Orta, and uh, Ortega, and Nicholas Cuchera. Thank you so much, you guys, for supporting our ministry. And you guys should be thanking them too, because you wouldn't be hearing this without their help. If you want to be part of what we're doing, and you go to the Bear Wozniak, uh, uh, the DeepAdventure.com website, or the or the Patreon forward slash. Bear Wozniak, bear, patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak, Deep Adventure. You can become a Patreon donor. If you do, guess what? You get instant access to every uh, uh, radio show that we do. Right now, most of our shows are recorded nine months before they're aired. And you have instant access to our Long Ride Home TV show. As soon as we get the director's cut done, long before it airs on EW10, you get that. Plus, you get an all-seasons pass to all of the Bear Wozniak adventures and all the Long Ride Home TV. So we appreciate your donations, you guys. I want to give a shout out to you. We're talking with Dr. John Ertley. Now it's time to get serious, Doc, because I'm, I'm telling you, I see, I, I mean, I get angry because I see people, I see men. I'm not, I'm not talking about the women, I'm talking about the men here. I see men and dude, they're just, they, we need to save our lives and we need to get healthy, not for our sake, 
for the sake of our mission, for the sake of our family, what, what are the key, uh, and how, how men are listening to this, they're convicted, they want to get in shape. What's the, what, are the, what are the first things they should do? What areas of their life do they need to deal with? Can you do that in 30 seconds, please? Well, <laughs> I'll try my best, Mary. Okay. You know, it's, it's really interesting. <clears throat> Getting back to basics, I'll tell you, exercise is critical. Exercise is absolutely critical. Being able to actually eat well, um, eating clean, organic, being able to actually have high nutrient dense foods, green leafy vegetables, and then really partaking of nature's pharmacy of spices and herbs. Being able to have turmeric, cilantro, all have medicinal properties. All your, your basil has medicinal properties. Your mint has medicinal properties. All of this, the, the spices in our, our spice cabinet. So when I look at trying to be able to actually be healthy, one, yeah, we got to exercise. Yes, we have to be able to eat right. The other thing uh, that I like to be able to say too that is critical for men's health specifically is sleep. Again, being able to sleep at night allows us to be able to have better testosterone levels. It also helps with heart health. It helps with the brain health to be able to regenerate and rejuvenate. And then also please get in to be able to check with your doc to be able to do screening tests because if you catch diseases early, it's easier to be able to actually treat those diseases instead of actually letting them go. A lot of men just think we just, let's just ignore it and just continue to be able to go on. I, I really encourage you to be able to check in with your doc, to be able to take his recommendations, run the blood work, do the screening, because that's gonna be, don't be you know, fearful about it, but really make sure that you're, you're going in to be able to actually have the courage to, to do the screening so you can catch anything that's going on early um, before it gets out of control. This is so cool. This is one of my favorite topics. Hey, Doc, I want to have you on as a regular guest. We got to have you on a couple times a year, summer and one, and one, and, and, and New Year's, right? When everyone goes to the gym and you see all that hilarious stuff happening, right? But I, we, we got to do this all the time. Okay. So let's start with, okay. If you see my YouTube, I don't know if you can see what I'm wearing, Doc. I have my Jesus beats for praying the, 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 the very the, nice, uh, the, uh, I'm in Benedictine Oblate to pray the Jesus prayer. And then I have my Fitbit watch on. Beautiful. So, um, you know, I know I used to think I got good sleep until I started wearing a smart watch and it tracks my sleep pattern. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I, I thought I was getting, oh, I'm getting lots of sleep. I'm getting seven hours of sleep a night. But it tells me when I've gone to sleep. It tells me when I've woken up, how deep my sleep is. And so I've really learned to go, go to sleep earlier and try to stay in bed earlier. L later, every great athlete will tell you rest and sleep are important it's like the heart beats twice and then it rests talk to us about sleep yeah so the more well, one with sleep the more we actually research on sleep the more we see is what it does <laughs> to be able to help every single system of the body to be able to perform better and so if we're not sleeping i mean this is where with sleep it's it's affecting the heart significantly the ability to be able to have, again, arrhythmias or your heart, if your heart's not beating the way that it's in a regular pattern, it may be because we're not sleeping well. It may be because if we're having a lot of, again, brain fog, if we're not thinking well, this could be a result of not sleeping well. If we have a lot of fatigue, again, guys, how many times are we not having good fatigue? It could be because we're not sleeping well. The weight gain can be because, like I was alluding to, we're not producing the kind of testosterone that our bodies are needing to be able to actually, you know, I run tons of labs with men looking at their testosterone levels. Mm -hmm. Again, the first question I ask them when testosterone is low is are you sleeping? And nine times out of 10, their sleep is poor. And as you're saying, Bear, that you may be sleeping or you're, you're maybe in bed for that amount of time, but if you're not getting a good quality sleep, and quality is the most important thing there, is that if you're not actually getting into that REM cycle sleep, then you're not sleeping. And well, you know so what? It's like, yourself as far it's as like this, you know, there, and then if, if you're not sleeping, you don't feel like exercise. But if you don't exercise, you don't feel like sleeping. That's correct. When and you I, don't have good mood and your, your mental emotional state is poor and that you're not actually wanting to be able to do it either. And you go into this kind of pseudo depression. Aspect I, I do, man. I'll tell you what, it, my wife knows if I go three days without surfing, I might be walking the beach or I might get on my recumbent bike if, if, it's, if it's really bad weather. But when I haven't been in the water for three days, she, she knows. She'll say, you need to get in the water. But when I <laughs> teach people how to surf or we do some new physical activity, I tell them, you're going to get good sleep tonight. So part of good sleep is exercise, but yeah. also uh, sugar carbs, you know, uh, can be really, really tough for, 
for sleep. It's almost like it, um, and alcohol too late in the evening. Yep. So it's not only coffee too much. They're, they're just coffee. There's nothing coffee wrong with coffee. We're trying to be able to just eat. Are you out, talking about re- coffee? Wet dish rag. Just try to get as much energy out of our bodies as we possibly can instead of actually being restorative. Coffee mm-hmm. is actually not bad. It has a lot of. Don't say anything bad about coffee. They, well, no, I'm not. No, a, I'm it, not actually. Opposed but in the to morning, yeah, no, I'm just it actually shows that it can extend life as well. But if it's actually creating more, you're using it as a, as a trying to get out of a your crutch. your. Your, your pit that you're digging yourself into, yeah. it can be problematic. So but first, all of this, you know, Barry, you, you mentioned this holistic view of mm. the body, that we're, we're all interconnected, that this is where you have to be able to start doing things to be able to actually get out of that rut. And oftentimes that rut, the force to get out of a rut is a whole lot harder to get to get out of it than actually get into yeah, it. Yeah, the inertia of rest. To do it. But I thought it was cool that I started talking about how to get in good shape by telling people go to sleep. You know, I, so, mm. okay, you guys, but that's not where we're going to stop, you guys. You, know, you can't <laughs> tell your wife, hey, Bear said I'm supposed to sleep more and, and, and don't, don't, not, not tell her that I didn't say to get some exercise. Okay, so May first, yeah, go ahead. If you do have a difficult time sleeping, it could just be as well that there could be, again, sleep apnea has been a mm-hmm. large issue going on um, to be able to actually see that if you are overweight and you're in this position of needing to be able to actually get that restoration, going through a sleep study test with an actual mm-hmm. physician is is incredibly important because you may be dealing with something that's called sleep apnea, which actually obstructs the body's breathing. And you just can't, it's not your fault that you can't sleep. It's just your body is in a state where it needs support. And so getting that actual mm-hmm. resources and support so that you can sleep is is critical. Well, this is where like basic health this is what the healthy person does. This is what you should always do. You shouldn't go to the doctor. You should go to that, those medical apps and you should self-diagnose what you have going on. You know, uh, <laughs> that's not true. I mean, I, I loved, I love the, the British show, Doc Martin, when people come in and say, I know what I've got wrong with me. And he just, he goes, no, actually you don't have an ingrown toenail. You're going to die. What, what's happening to you means you're going to die. So we need to, we need to have the, have the opportunity to go to our doctors, to our medical professionals, get the lab work done. And I, you know, I do it every year, find out, what, find out the base, the state of your health and have a consultation with the doctor, keep you on track. So the first thing we've been talking about is making sure that you have the, this element of sleep. And we're not prioritizing things. We're just, we're just kind of putting, uh, putting, it, um, putting all of this in a, in a, in kind of like in a balance wheel. What yeah. about, we're, now we got to take a break real quick, but talk to me about a decision to be happy and how that affects your health. Hmm. Well, <laughs> The one of the biggest things um, to, that I believe to be able to be health to be happy is to be able to live for one another and to be able to continue to live in a community of persons. Mm. So even in theological terms, we again, God is a trinity. He's father that's giving himself for the son, son that's receiving that love. And the Holy Spirit is this 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 life that bursts forth. We are made for that same union and communion with our community, and that's a critical piece of, of staying in, and being motivated to stay healthy. Okay, we're going to get back with uh, talk more with Dr. Ertley, one of the co-founders of Solidarity Health Share. A couple of members of my family are actually uh, members of that. And we want to encourage you guys, man, if you haven't gone to the deepadventure.com website, you're really missing out. Uh, first of all, you get a lot of free stuff when you sign up for our email newsletter. You... We send you, like for example, this this uh, radio show that you may be listening to on EDA by ten. You get a video version of that before it, it even airs, like the the morning it airs or the day before it airs. Uh, we send you other other content that others may not receive. Plus, you kind of know, get to know what we're up to, what we're going, what's going on. Like for example, our ocean cruise, our annual uh, ocean cruise retreat in December. So go to our website deepadventure.com, get your free stuff, and check us out. By the way, we got a lot of good merch there too. We'll be right back. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. 
Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the Bear Wozniak adventure. I've got Dr. John Ertley, one of the co-founders of Solidarity Health Share, something that I really believe in. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a great alternative, and it may become the only alternative uh, for Catholics as time, as time goes on as far as being able to help one another with quality, with quality uh, health care. A couple members of my family actually are part of Solidarity Health Share, and I just love their vision. So we have Dr. Uh, John Ertley with us. We're talking about how to stay healthy. We've talked about the importance of sleep. You know, Doc, my, my mother was, is a valiant, was a valiant woman. My wife is a valiant woman. I see in both of them that they've made a decision to be happy. I was reading Mother Angelica's word for the day yes, a couple of days ago, and she said, it's really sad to know that if, you, if there's one person on earth you dislike, you really can't get into heaven until you deal with that in purgatory. <laughs> it's like bitterness can be a big health issue. Uh, sure. what, you know, you, you know if, if, if you, what you're, you allow your mind to dwell on, um, it's like Abe Lincoln said, what you look like when you're uh, 30 and under is, is your parents' fault. What you look like after that is your fault. You know, whether, it's the, the, whether you have a, a crease in your face that looks like you smile all the time or it looks like you got a built-in frown. Talk us a little bit more about community and, and, and attitude. You talked about how a life of self-donation and, and being involved in community uh, is a wellspring for us. Yeah, it, you know, it, it certainly is. And so this is where... Barry, what you're saying is, is that, you know, happiness is a part of the holy life <laughs> and mm. to be able to be holy is the ability to be able to actually give of yourself, even in the midst of your sufferings that you're going through, even in the midst of those sufferings. Um, but a big part of that is where I was thinking about going in that is that it's a part about living in community to live for one else, some, somebody else, and that you're living for purpose that you're not just doing it for yourself, defeating um, selfishness, but when you actually are living in community or living for the purpose of, you know, you're, you're giving yourself up for a spouse or you're living for your children or you're giving yourself up to actually serve the, the, the poor in your community or those that are in need, that it gives this wellspring of life. And, um, What's really interesting is that when you actually look at some of the studies on what is the number one uh, factor that will predict old age and the people that live to the, the centurions, the hundreds, into the not, well into the 90s, is that it's not actually obesity. <laughs> it's not actually these other diseases that we actually see. It's that are you a part of a community? Do you still feel like living for somebody else? This is where I, it's been my experience, you know, with my with my grandparents, you know, when they when one of them passed, it was very difficult when mm. they were able to actually continue to be able to want to continue to keep living. And so mm. this is where it can be a very challenge for when you lose that spouse. And I think it, people have experienced this. That when you lose the, the loss of a, a father or mother or a grandparent, that the other one passes pretty quickly thereafter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is this ability to be able to stay united for mm -hmm. living for something, to be able to, and I continue to say, fulfill the role that God has had for you mm -hmm. to be able to continue to you know, serve the kingdom. Yeah, so uh, going to church is good. Uh, we, re we receive a lot there. But uh, part of the church mission is, of course, to be involved in, in, in giving. So a lot of people I know in this day and age, they're isolated. Like a lot of people work out of their home. I know I do. I could very easily just stay there and not, not ever leave. I have to find a place for my, to go, not just to go to the gym, but I need to find a way that I can go out and be in contact with others and serve, like through the Knights of Columbus or, or, yeah. or like I'm a member of Knights on Bikes and things like that. We're talking with Dr. John Ertley. He's one of the co-founders of Solidarity Health Share. We've been talking about how to stay healthy. We've talked about the importance of sleep. Now we're talking about the importance of friendship and giving and self-donation. But okay, now we're going to get to the real stuff. Are you ready? Exercise. What what is what does God say to us about stewardship of our bodies in the area of exercise, Doc? Well, there every cell in our body needs nutrients. It needs oxygen, and if you're not moving, 
the body has a difficult time circulating that actual that blood flow, getting your actual body healthy and, and just the system, how our body, how God has created that system to be able to to be to be working at most effective level. And so if you're not exercising, you're not getting the best oxygenation and nutrients and blood flow to the actual systems of the body. And so this is where being able to continue that ability to exercise um, aerobic and um, weights as well. So you definitely want to be able to do weight bearing exercises because this is going to be able to help support even just the metabolism of the body, making sure that your body's metabolism is continually activated. It increases hormone levels like testosterone when we exercise. It helps produce endorphins to be able to stay, as you're t we're talking about, to stay happy as well, and to be able to reduce pain, to be able to help with sleep. Um, it's this, it's the oil of our body. If 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 you're running your car without oil, it'll just it'll it'll deplete. If we're not exercising, then we're not going to be able to have that metabolism and allow that just the basic function of how God has designed our bodies to be able to function at the highest level. Well, you know, and also I know um, it's important to have, like you said, both the, the, the movement, the aerobic element, but also the resistance training to, to be okay. able to build muscle. I personally, my, my workout regimen is I work out twice a day. Usually it's a long beach walk, which is also my prayer life. Walking on the sand can be tough, just walking. Yeah. Um, and then it's usually an hour or more of surfing every day. And I break up my day in, in thirds. So a third of the about halfway through the morning, I'm out there uh, stand up paddle surfing, which is where I get my my resistance training, too, because it's a it's a total body workout. One of the things that I found, Doc, is I found I do. I, I don't go work out. I, I don't go to the gym. I, you know, I lift a woman. I don't know if you know what I do. I lift a woman when I surf. I don't know if you know that. Oh uh, yes, world champ. And, and, and pictures. My, my wife and I still do that. And I'm at the age of sixty six. We uh, still still uh, compete and are successful at that. But um, I I go out and I play. So it, a lot of people, their right, their gym rats, they like to go to the gym and that's how they play. But I mean, find something that you enjoy doing. If you, I remember I was training for my first black belt. Uh, my sensei said, okay, you need to start running because I really wasn't a runner. We did a lot of kicking and stuff like that. That's not really giving an aerobic workout, but he said, you need to start running. And I said, well, and I said, so how do I do that? And he goes, leave your house and start running and go to the, uh, the 10th telephone pole and come back. The next day, go to the 11th telephone pole and come back. Just keep going one more pole longer. And my, my, my Fitbit watch is a great, it's a really fun tool. Since, gosh, for 15 years, I used to have a Gar I still have a Garmin GPS for when I surf. So far this year, I have stand up paddle surfed uh, 335 miles. Because uh, my Garmin tells me that. And I used yep. to use, and I, kinda, I leave it, I never reset it till the end of the year. But I used to use that for, for watching my, my, my beach walking too. But now I have my, my Fitbit. So I'm going to get my 10,000 steps in. You know, yep. Even if I have to walk around my house for a while, I'm going to do that. If you're not disciplined, if you don't have a goal, if you don't have a pattern for doing that, if you're not doing your flexibility training, by the way, which is very important too, if Absolutely. you don't have time. So discuss, discuss the element of uh, having a plan and of being disciplined in it. Well, this goes into just having a habit, right? Being able mm. to actually developing habits and um, being able to, to do it makes you want to be able to do it more. And you'd be able right. to have that ability to be able to that, that staying in that rut. You want to develop these ruts that are actually good for us. And you make a great point is that do something that's enjoyable to you. You know, mm -hmm. be creative with what it is that you do. Exercise does not have to just look like being in the gym, as you're saying. That's absolutely correct. But being able to develop these these patterns of just just move, get your body out and just movement and allow mm -hmm. the body to be able to to mm -hmm. to just not be sedentary. Um, even just getting out in the sun builds vitamin D levels as well. Um, so all of this, it just it allows us our bodies to be able to be the way that God's created it to be. What I will say too, though, is that oftentimes I come into contact with people say, Doc, I just don't have the time. Oh my God. My life is way too busy yeah. for exercise. And I say, okay, so my response to that is always, well, what you're doing, so that, you know, if, if I have a guy coming in, I say, well, I wanna be able to spend time with my family. I'm already at work and I feel like taking a, a, taking that time to exercise is gonna take me away from the family. I said, well, yes, but, 
you're literally using minutes to hours to exercise and you're you're investing minutes to hours to be able to get years on your life. Exactly. Good quality years. And this is where if that's not worth it for us, we do have the time to be able to carve out for those exercising plus, activities. We got to take a break, doc, but pl- you know, plus also when when you exercise, all your time is more productive. You're more it alert. Is. So you don't need the time that it used to take you this long. Now it takes you less time. And it's so much fun when your body starts coming to life. But like take your Fitbit, walk. If you're only walking 2,000 steps a day, tomorrow walk 2,050 and then work your way up. We're talking with Dr. John Ertley. God, man, this is a great guest. I want to have you on our show again. Uh, We'll be going to be back with more. We have one more segment with Dr. John. He's one of the co-founders of Solidarity HealthShare. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to remind you that you can go to our web store. On our website, we got Long Ride Home uh, merch, T-shirts, coffee cups, motorcycle pins. We got my seven man, uh, the seven virtue cigar sampler that is the seven virtues, um, seven different fantastic blends of cigars as long as I, I pretty much puff on my cigars but all but having those in moderation isn't a tor- t- terribly bad for you it's how i it's how i how i got to know gk chesterton and reading him anyway we'll be right back uh, with more of the bear wasnick adventure with dr john early from solidarity health share good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash bear wasnick deep adventure you get instant access to every radio show bear wasnick adventure and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Dr. John Ertley was with me. We're talking about health. If you could see him, uh, he is the picture of health. He's a poster child for Solidarity Health Share. No, actually, you look at you look. You could tell by looking at you that there's oxygen flowing through your body. You can see that in people, in their countenance, and in the lift in their spirit, and and they're just the general healthy uh, a way that you you look. And so we're glad to have you, Doctor John, and I are talking about how to stay healthy. We've talked about sleep. We've talked about, which is our favorite subject. Talk about sleep. Talk about joy uh, in community, self donation. We've talked about the fact that all of these things that we're doing, our, vir- our habits, which is another way of saying virtues, uh, exercise and getting aerobic and anaerobic exercise. Um, flexibility training, Doc. Very important to do some stretching. But let's go into this whole area of eating. Beautiful. Because it's tough, man. An alcoholic <laughs> can give up drinking, but a person who is a foodaholic they still got to have food, right? So t- talk to us about well, Listen, eating. sugar, uh, okay, sugar is more addicting than cocaine. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's more addicting than cocaine. And we know this. And yet, increase in sugar has literally created so much infl- – oh, sorry, guys um, – has created so much inflammation in mm. our systems and inflammation creating those body aches and pain or fatigue. And literally, sugar is just – it's all this, the sugar is just literally, again, we're addicted to it, but it gives us this quick high. But where do you find this sugar? And it drops. It's all Are we over putting it in our coffee? It's just the cook. Yeah, so we have it's just it the our, sugar we put in our coffee, right? It's not, it's not in our bread. It's not in our. So, one of the, so what's really interesting is that it's in our drinks. So if, if you have the sugar in your drinks, in our coffees, it can be in our a lot of the complex carbohydrates that break down to sugar. It can be in our grains, our pastas. What one of the things that's really interesting is that when we use non or when we use processed grains, white bread, white pastas, white rice, what that process does is that it takes out that fiber. Fiber is what helps slow the glucose to absorb into the system. Mm. So without getting too into the weeds, you literally when you're having the processed um, breads, pastas, uh, uh, rices, what it's doing is it's quickly peaking that sugar right into the actual system, giving you that quick high, and then dropping you really quickly, where you need to be, you're usually moody, in pain, having inflammation. And hungry, and hungry. And, and, and going back to then being hungry again and needing that rise. Instead mm-hmm. of having good healthy proteins in the diet mm-hmm. on a moderation of protein, 
You want to be able to have whole grains with good, healthy fiber into the diet. Healthy fiber, there's a lot of talk on probiotics. What is the food for probiotics? What am I it's drinking right fiber. here? I'm drinking, What's a, that? I'm drinking kombucha right here, probiotics. Excellent. And it's a fermented way to be able to help good probiotics in the gut. But our, if we don't have fiber, those probiotics that you're drinking right there, Bear, are just mm -hmm. going to die away. Mm -hmm. It's our fiber that helps to be able to actually grow those healthy bacteria in our guts to be able to help digest, helps with mood, helps with the ability of uh, – it, it, there's some low bacteria in our guts too that lead to obesity. And so we see that this is very critical for us. Um, so you want to be able to try to remove sugar and not have those dips. So you do that by way of trying to be able to keep those those dips coming by putting protein in, which helps, and fiber, which can help to slow down that sugar jump and sugar dip in the actual system. You know, I, I tell you what, you know, as a pro athlete, I have to make weight. In other words, my, my partner has to weigh over half my body weight. Hmm. So if I'm 20 pounds overweight, that means I got to lift a partner that's 10 pounds heavier than the last time, right? So I, I, I've, uh, I've worked my whole life uh, in this area. I'm, I'm naturally strong and big, but, hmm. I, it's, but I remember, uh, oh gosh, over 20 years ago just saying, I'm always hungry. Doctor, I'm always hungry. Why am I always hungry? What's wrong with me? It was because I was eating breads. I was eating, uh, I was eating let's put it this way. You go, into the, you go into the grocery store and you go anywhere inside the inner aisles, you're probably getting too much sugar carbs in there. If you stay Absolutely. in the outer aisles and you're buying organic food, you're buying real vegetables or whatever. And so I was dropping weight by doing what? What I was doing? Bagels for breakfast because there's no fat and Jamba juice, dude. I was just, I was just, all I had was sugar. So I worked so hard starving all the time to get my weight down. And I go, where did my muscle go? But now that I have more of a balanced diet, I, you know, my, what I, what I do, if my wife is out of town, I make what I call training food. It's some beef, uh, vegetables, uh, not really in a stew. And then a real light uh, red sauce, very, very light red sauce. And I just mix that all up and I just cook it up. And it's my training food. I get my, I get my fiber, I get my protein. And, uh, and, it, and don't you know, forget about healthy fats. Yeah, so healthy fats. Healthy Talk fats about that. Talk about that bad fat. word. Healthy fats satiate us. And so there's been this overall thought that fats make us fat. And we yeah, see I remember the, the that. actual data that's coming out with ketogenic diets right. and the ability to be able to have high fat, good, healthy fat. You're able to switch that metabolism so that your body is able to actually metabolize fat. And if we're not having fats, your body forgets to how to metabolize it. And so it starts to build on. And so mm. this is where that fat starts to satiate us as well. So we don't feel like we're having to go back to the well to be able to keep having that creme and those sugar into the actual system. I know so many men that come to me and they go in my man cave, you know, Bear's man cave where people can join. Men can join and then it's a secret Facebook group. But we challenge and inspire and work with each other. We have every couple of weeks a Zoom video chat meetup. But I've had many of them lose 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds. Because I get, I, I to say, I, I don't know, you go to your doctor, whatever, but I, you can look at the old Atkins book, or you can look at the keto book, but I guarantee you, if you keep your, your sugar carbs, not your good carbs, not your fiber carbs, if you keep your sugar carbs below 20 or below 40, or, or somewhere in that 35 and 20, if you count your, if you count your sugar grams, you're, you don't need to count anything else. That's and, and, and you can, and I always tell people, you can eat all you want to. And they go, what do you mean? I'm hungry all the time. As soon as you get rid of those sugar carbs, you forget about lunch or you, you order right. something. I order a nice, big, juicy omelet uh, or a steak and forget the potatoes. I'll have a vegetables instead. I find myself taking half of that home and having it for breakfast the next morning because you're just not Correct. as hungry. Because Barry, you're getting, you're, what it's doing is it's stimulating your body's metabolism. It's getting your body to work the way that God has designed it to so that your body, you can eat. You can eat, you know? Back in our ancestors, when we were hunter-gatherers, we had feast and famine. We would, we would feast. You have all this food. And yet, again, it's the way that our bodies have been designed to be able to make sure that, yeah, you can eat that. And you're, guess what? When you're metabolizing fat well, your cholesterol stays in good numbers your weight stays in good numbers your body becomes just you're able to think your your body's able to work the way there, that it's supposed when you to. Do, I, when you eat uh and protein actually uh helps you synthesize you know 
uh, it gives you your muscle. But I find when I'm when I'm have my lower sugar carbs, and I'm getting my protein, I sleep like a baby. You're absolutely right because you don't have the inflammation. So so mm. just just think about that. The sugar and the carbs are leading to these inflammation that's going on, and your body is not able to actually. So sleep is a inflammation when you have even low levels of inflammation what are if you're in pain you can't sleep if you have even un, low levels of inflammation you're going to be more anxious and having that more that mind that just stays turned on instead of mm. actually shutting it on down because your body's in this stress response and so cortisol is being you know mm. stimulated which continues to be able to lead to more weight and that's where removing that those carbs and that sugar just allows that stress response to be able to reduce gives your body more energy to be able to go towards the critical things that it needs to go towards, building muscle, heart development, brain function, and it starts to be able to actually devote the resources to go into actually things that you want it to go to instead of actually trying to fight against yourself. And you know, it goes back to, think about, uh, I'm a, an oblate at the Benedictine Monastery in the North Shore of Oahu. They fast twice a week, full day. Don't ever go up there on the fast day. You'll get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They'll let you go in the kitchen. You feel guilty <laughs> getting one, you know. But there is you know, something so about I, yeah. I would mm -hmm. so fasting just in general. I am a big proponent of fasting mm. because even when the ketogenic diet is not burning the weight off, going through a therapeutic fast. And now there's a spiritual component to fasting, but just the medical side of what fasting does, going through a medical fast. And I'm talking for, you know, 48, 72 hours, even a five day fast, again, to be able to actually get that body's metabolism back up and running. We think about that, that that's somehow a nightmare to be able to do a three to five day fast. It's actually the worst day is the first day. Yeah. And then when you get to that level, you literally become on a runner's high where your body is able to just start. It's amazing to see the energy, the brain function, the spiritual mm. um, the, the, your mind to be able to actually communicate with God just is so much more vibrant. And you're not wasting your time eating. I, I remember going on a seven day <laughs> fast and, and at the end of that found my wife, my, the mother of my children. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what I was praying for. Uh, but the thing about it is um, we want to we want to encourage everybody. Uh, you can find out more at SolidarityHealthShare.org. Um, there's plenty of other places you can find good resources on how to stay healthy. When you go on a, on a keto type regimen, the first thing you can do is lose four to seven pounds in three days. And it's not fat, it's inflammation, it's water your body's retaining. Get rid of that water, you'll feel a lot less sluggish and a lot happier. You guys go to deepadventure.com, find out all about what we're up to. Maybe you can be a part of what, what we're doing. Uh, we'd love to have you uh, help us out and become a uh, part of our uh, outreach, deepadventure.com. Until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you, as we say in Hawaii, aloha. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.